Welcome back, Hex Maniacs. Today... There you are. It ain't got no gas in it. Cause it's on the ground. <laughs> yep, it's gas. Why, 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 why? Why did all the gasoline leak out of my generator? Well, I know where I screwed up. I know what the problem is and I know how to fix it. But first, let me do some explaining. The most commonly available fuel at your local gas station, at least in America, is probably E10. E10 is a mixture of 90% gasoline and 10% ethanol. So what is ethanol? Corn, essentially, like really hairy corn. Be more precise, it's actually alcohol made from fermented corn. <laughs> mm. It's good stuff. <laughs> Ethanol has a higher octane level than gasoline. But if you take some of that ethanol and you add it to said gasoline, you increase the octane level of the gasoline, which lets you use a crappier gasoline to start with. Let's talk about what makes E10 so great. Okay. Let's talk about what makes E10 so terrible. Number one, ethanol has less energy than gasoline. About a third less, actually. That means you get fewer miles per gallon in your vehicle and less runtime per fill up in your small engines. It's corrosive. It causes rapid decay of seals, gaskets, and rubber hoses in fuel systems. As a bonus, it also gums up carburetors because it doesn't burn as clean as gasoline. Every vehicle made after 2001 it's supposed to be in the clear. At least that's what they say. Before 2001, you're on your own, and if you've got a carbureted vehicle, you can bet it's no good for you. And it's definitely no good for any small engines like generators or yard equipment. If it's so bad, why is it just about the only thing you can buy? Well, friends, the great solver of all problems. That's right, government. Wait a second, did I just? Yep, I did. I pronounced creator wrong. It's mandated, and I'm not talking about Neil Patrick Harris. Oh. But it saves the environment, right? Wrong! New studies show that E10 is actually more harmful to the environment than pure gasoline. So I screwed up, okay? I put E10 knowingly into my generator thinking, well, I'll use it up before it goes bad. And that was about eight months ago. And I didn't use it up. And it was really stupid because this generator is a dual fuel, so I really should have never put any gasoline in this to begin with. I could have just run it off of the propane that I have it set up for. Just for <laughs> and giggles though, let's put some gasoline in here and see where it goes. Ah, uh, yeah. So pretty much everywhere. Everywhere you would expect it to be. I've got some parts to order and some repairing to do on this generator. I have this handy dandy ethanol tester. Super simple. I'm going to use distilled water. I don't know if you have to use distilled water. You might can use regular water. You probably can. But anyway, let's do it with some distilled. Fill it up to the blue line right here. I have to get this gasoline in there. I'm disappointing Kim because I'm using one of her food funnels. Let's just go ahead and be careful here so that I don't make a huge mess. Ah, yes. <laughs> That's exactly why I put it in the pan. Let's find out how much ethanol we have in here. It should be below 10%. As you can see here, we are actually at 5% ethanol content in this gasoline. You know, the labels say that it can have up to 10%, so obviously this had only 5%. Good for them. Always make sure that you dispose of this properly. How do you make E10 safe to use? Well, you do it basically just like in that test. You use water to remove the ethanol from the gasoline. I'm no scientist, so I'm not gonna try to explain this, but basically the ethanol is attracted to the water. That's what helps it separate. A clear gas or fuel container like this is perfect normally, but not this time, and it won't work for me, and I'll explain why later. Instead, today, I'm gonna use this mason jar, which will, you know, it'll show everything really well. Distilled water. Some food coloring. 
What this will do will just help us see the line of delineation more clearly. Now I'm gonna add one cup of the colored water to the gasoline. I think this is how you're supposed to do it. I'm actually gonna let this set overnight just to make sure that it gets good and separated. Wow, guys, look at this. Not that, this. So what I had did was the first mixture that I made, I realized afterwards that it was old gas. It was really yellow. So I made a second mixture and you can see here that it's a little bit lighter, although not much, not as much as you would think. This is the older one and this is the newer one. On both of these, you know, I started out with five cups of gasoline, added one cup of water. And as you can see here now, down on the bottom is our water and food coloring. And that's at mm, a little over a cup and a half. Now I have to get the gas out of here or I've got to get the water out of here. And I think if we try to pour it, mm, that's no bueno. I've seen lots of ways to do this. You can have a container that has a spigot on the bottom. There's scientific devices for doing this. The, the channel that I saw that kind of figured it out best was when he used one of these. This is just a liquid transfer pump. And originally I purchased this and this uh, fuel container because I thought, oh, okay, well, I'll do this right here and I'll get it out. And then I screwed up and this is not long enough to reach the bottom of this container. You wanna make sure you dispose of the water and ethanol mixture properly. So I've already taken the liberty of using some cat litter to fill up this pail. Once the water and ethanol mixture goes into the cat litter, it'll dry hard and you'll be able to throw it away safely. Let's put the pump in because we have to get the water from the bottom. Okay, here we go. Ooh, I about shot water on me like an idiot. That would have been, <laughs> that would have been stupid. I'm not a smart man. Ooh, well that was quick. Let's go again. It's a little bit tricky, but I think that is pretty much all of it out of there now. So now what you have is a lower octane gasoline than you started out with. So you're really gonna wanna start out with like a 91 or a 93 at least whenever you do this, because the octane is gonna drop. Obviously, you don't wanna store your fuel in a mason jar, store it in a fuel safe container that vents. You might wanna add some octane booster to it, or you might even wanna add some fuel stabilizer. And when you do this, it'll be good for up to two years of storage. And you do wanna make sure that you always have gasoline on storage for emergencies. Now, if you're fortunate enough to have a gas station nearby that sells 100% gasoline, and there are still gas stations out there that do, by all means, go get your fuel there and forget everything I just told you. Lest you don't believe me. that's got a wicked kick to it. Now that you know how to safely clean, prepare, and store your petrol for emergencies, you only know half of the story. Be sure to watch this video right here, and I'll show you how to be ready for the storms that are surely coming. You'll go ahead, watch it. I'm, I'm slobbering all over myself. <laughs>